I don't know if you guys saw this article that uh, the Wall Street Journal reported that WeWork is going to file for Chapter 11 as early as next week. They have a significant debt burden owed to SoftBank Vision Fund as part of their go public. They've signed leases in office buildings in San Francisco and elsewhere around the country. $10 billion in total lease obligations due starting in the second half of 2023 through the end of 27. And after that, an additional $15 billion starting in 2028. And as of June, WeWork had 70, 777 locations, including 229 in the US in major cities. The business made about, call it 840 million bucks in revenue last quarter. So that works out to call it a $3.5 billion revenue run rate with you know $10 billion of lease obligations starting next year. So the business is just drowning in these lease obligations and to restructure 777 lease obligations in this environment that we're talking about while doing what Jamath is saying, lowering rents to attract employers to show up and actually rent space from them is obviously causing the business model to distort even worse than it has been historically. They burned $8 billion of free cash flow in since Q4 of 2019. $8 billion of free cash. There's no question that, that WeWork has been a capital destruction machine. That being said, I actually think that some private equity player is going to buy this out of bankruptcy and make a fortune. I agree with that too. Because out of those 777 locations, a lot of them are good locations and have good tenancy. They probably generate good revenue. The problem is that the leases are just bad. And bankruptcy gives you the power to break those leases or renegotiate them. So a really smart private equity player would come in here and say, okay, we're going to take these locations, we're going to divide them into three buckets. Bucket number one is we're going to get rid of them because they're just bad locations. We don't want them. There's just no occupancy. Bucket number two is we're going to go to the landlord and say that, sorry, like this lease doesn't work for us. We will be willing to work for you as an operator of the space and you'll pay us a fee and a rev share on whatever it makes, but we can't pay you a guaranteed rent. So that's bucket number two. And then bucket three, which will be the best locations, they'll go back to the landlord and say, here's 60 cents on the dollar. We're willing to pay you this in, in rent. That's it. If that's not good enough for you, we're breaking the lease. We're out. And those landlords are going to have to accept it because who are they going to get who's any better? And they don't even have the TIs. They don't have the capital to put some new tenant in there. And even if they could put someone in there, it's not going to be at a rent that's much higher than 60 cents on the dollar because we work made a lot of these top of market leases. So I think the landlord will take the bird in the hand. So think about it. Some private equity player goes in there, renegotiates all these leases, sheds the bad ones. And all of a sudden, the business is going to make a lot of money. And the reason why it's going to make money is because we work poured all of this uh, capital into renovating these spaces and making them really nice. I mean, if you go into a WeWork, they are really nice spaces. And the reason for that is because WeWork spent billions of TI dollars making these things incredibly nice. Was that a wise investment? No, it was a terrible investment. But that money has been spent and already lost. That, that capital has been wiped out. So whoever buys this thing out of bankruptcy now is going to be the beneficiary of all of those absurd TI dollars that were spent when Adam Newman... Oh my God, you just convinced me. Let's go buy it. <laughs> Let's put it in a bid. Is it filed? Is it filed? The brilliance of Adam Newman was somehow convincing wow. all these investors to put in billions of dollars into TI money on the theory that it was a software business. This was never a software business. It's a real estate <laughs> development company. It was Regis. It was Regis. It was Regis. It was Regis. So, so I got SoftBank put in a total of $16.9 billion in equity and debt. Oh my into gosh. WeWork. Isn't that incredible? Who did? Oh my gosh. Softbank. Softbank, which is mostly through the Vision Fund, which is, as you guys know, 45% Saudi money. It was Regis yeah. with much better design, but that design came at a huge expense, which was, again, this overinvestment in, in TI dollars, combined with the fact that they had no discipline around signing leases, and they have so many top of market lease deals. Yeah. But again, that's all fixable for someone who comes in. Old saying in real estate that it's the third owner who makes all the money. Like the first owner who does all the ground up, they lose a fortune and they get blown out. Then the second guy comes in and <laughs> thinks that they're going to make it work, but <laughs> great they can't make it work either. So then they get blown out. And it's finally the third person who comes in who makes all the money. And that's going to happen uh -huh. here too. Oh my God, that's just fantastic. This is a story of the ages.